Hello everyone. Have you ever noticed why data is represented in the form of vectors, matrices, and tensors in machine learning and deep learning? Why for loops are replaced with vector multiplication? This video will explain you why. In this video, we will discuss about what are vectors and tensors in machine learning and deep learning? How and why data is represented in the form of vectors and matrices? Why vectors are used instead of for loops for multiplication and other calculations? Finally, we will compare the execution time of vector operation and for loops in Jupyter Notebook. Now, what is a vector? A vector is a collection of scalars or simply a collection of data of same type. So when we talk about scalar, it means a simple value, a simple number. It could be 1, 2 or any value or any number. So when these scalars are collected together, it becomes a vector. You can consider a vector similar to how we are defining an array in C or C++ language. In the picture, you can see that a scalar has a rank of 0, which is just a single number. A vector will have a rank of 1. A matrix is a 2D array. Of values with similar type and a tensor anything which has a dimension more than 2d it could be 3d 4d or any d will be considered as a tensor now coming to the representation a vector can be just represented as scalar separated by a comma but in a general form a vector can be represented in the form of column vector like in this case we can see that we have three rows with a single column so that's why its shape will be 3 comma, where 3 represents the number of rows. Now one of the example on operation on vectors is to multiply two vectors. First import the numpy library, create two vectors, vector1 and vector2, and then this np.dot dot is an inbuilt function in numpy. We pass two arguments, vector1 and vector2, and we will get the multiplication result. Coming to our next question, why data is represented? as vectors in machine learning and deep learning. Now there are two ways of doing multiplication or any calculation. First is using the for loops and the other is using a vector. Then why vector calculation is preferred over for loops? Because till now, in our traditional programming, everybody is using loops only. But suddenly, in the deep learning, we started using vector multiplication. The first reason is, Doing mathematical operations like add, subtract, multiply or divide on vectors instead of for loops makes the computation faster for large data sets, even more than 100 times faster. Yes, even more than 100 times. And we will see this in the Jupyter Notebook. Less number of code lines are required to do mathematical operations on vectors and matrices. And code looks more clean faster to implement as we have seen before also that we just need to use an np dot dot and pass the two argument the two vectors and we will get the result whereas in case of four loops first we need to create a loop we need to decide for how long we need to run the loop and then do the multiplication part one by one inbuilt functions present for vector operations in libraries like numpy make effective use of both CPU and GPU and this is very important because in case of deep learning we are dealing with CPUs and GPUs and since we need to do these multiplication operations on millions of data sets so it's very important to make effective use of CPUs and GPUs. Now let's jump into the Jupyter Notebook and see the difference between vector and loop. Now we are in the Jupyter Notebook and as we have seen that np dot dot function is used to multiply two vectors, that's why we need to import the NumPy module. Let's import it. Now to compare the execution time of for loop versus using the vectors, we need to get the start time and the end time. So we have imported the time module, created two NumPy arrays with random values, each having 100,000 random values. Print the shape. Now get the start time using this API. Perform the dot operation using np dot dot method and get this multiply result and get the end time. Now since we get the start time as well as the end time, so when we get the difference end time minus start time, so we get the total execution time required in vector operation. 
Similarly, we need to do the same thing for loops also. So let's create a loop and run it for 100,000 times. Do the multiplication operation. Get the start time as well as the end time. Now again, to get the loop execution time, we need to subtract the end time with the start time. Let's run it. As you can see here that the shape is 100,000 comma because we had discussed previously that vectors are represented as column vectors. And here the first one is row and the second is the column which is blank. And since in this case we have the 100,000 values in a row, so that's why we have this 100,000. Since we are doing the operation on same values, so we should get the similar result. So here also we get 24987 and 24987, both for vector as well as for the loop. Now coming to the execution time, we can see here that the vector execution time is just 1.21 milliseconds, whereas for loop, it is taking 1 to 4, which is even more than 100 times. Let's run it again, two more times. So you see that vector execution time is even 100 times lesser in comparison to the loop execution time. From here, we can also see that there is a huge variation in vector execution time, whereas for loop execution time, it's nearly almost same. This is because we had discussed previously that vectors are making effective use of CPUs and GPUs. Now here one important thing to check here that we have set in the runtime as none. So we have the three options, none, GPU and TPU. In this case, we are not going to use the GPU because otherwise the execution will be split into multiple threads and both will show similar result. So from here we can conclude that loop execution time is 100 times more in comparison to the vector execution time. You can get the GitHub link of this Jupyter Notebook in the video description. If you have any questions or queries, do mention in the comment section. Please subscribe to my channel if you like this video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.